right, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to talk. My name is Shar Hashemi. Uh, I practice in Washington, D.C. I trained in orthopedic hand and peripheral nerve. Uh, some of the problems that we take care of in the body include patients with facial pain, and we uh, go through a detailed multidisciplinary approach with our colleagues in neurology, ENT, oral surgery, psychology, uh, to identify peripheral nerve injury, peripheral nerve damage, musculoskeletal conditions, and, and other uh, related in, uh, conditions. I, I feel that our specialty in peripheral nerve is a beautiful specialty because the physical exam uh, plays a significant role in deriving to a, a specific diagnosis and treatment plan. Einstein uh, reminds us uh, the measure of in intelligence is the ability to change. I hope that we could look at uh, oral facial pain with a new light, uh, with a different perspective. Uh, from a disclosure standpoint, uh, I'm the principal and founder of, of a clinic and surgical center in Washington, D.C. Dr. Saperstein did a beautiful job in uh, illustrating uh, uh, his talk. There, there's a lot of overlap in some of the components that we we're going to speak about. Uh, when we think of facial pain, uh, we, patients may complain of a dull, aching, sharp, or a burning sensation, and, and it could stay in one region of the face, or it could radiate uh, to the shoulder, back, neck. It could be constant, it could be intermittent, it could be bilateral or unilateral. And some of the uh, sources uh, of uh, the, the complaint could be from a dental cause, infection, malignancy, trauma, stress, or combined uh, condition. For the constant type of uh, facial pain, Sometimes uh, we try to categorize these, and, and uh, the sharp, constant uh, pain, we should consider a, a dental source, where when patients have dull, uh, constant pain, there, there may be a pathology involving uh, the parotid gland or atypical trigeminal neuralgia. Aching etiology may, may occur after stroke, and the burning, possibly related to trigeminal, uh, pain or burning mouth syndrome. In the intermediate category, we think of the patients that have sharp pain. There may be a headache disorder, uh, dull, possibly a temporal uh, arteritis, aching, uh, temporomandibular uh, disorder uh, that either is muscle in nature or, or joint in nature, and trigeminal neuralgia. On the burning aspect, we, we, the subcategory is potentially atypical trigeminal neuralgia or burning mouth syndrome. From the dental causes, uh, uh, the patients say that they're having sensitivity to touch and, that, and also pain. It could arise from infection, dental work, uh, uh, dental surgery, or, or an abscess. Uh, from a peripheral nerve perspective, we think of any kind of swelling or infection as uh, applying pressure to the surrounding peripheral nerves. Usually, uh, on the trigeminal uh, focus, patients may have uh, a shock type of symptom either in one of the branches of uh, the trigeminal nerve. Musculoskeletal causes, uh, I think it's important for us to consider the uh, TMD or temporomandibular uh, disorders. TMD will break down into the muscle etiologies. Uh, we have to consider looking at the masseter muscles, the lateral and medial pterygoids, and uh, the temporalis muscle, whereas the joint uh, disorders looking at the TMJ uh, pathology to see if it's uh, 
what the relationship is with the articular disc and, and the ligaments. For the TMD, they're going to be complaining classically of pain localized to the uh, TMJ, clicking, and limited motion. Myofascial pain, it's a muscle disorder that could arise from abnormal movement, and some subtypes uh, could be myoclonus, torticollis, or hemifacial spasm. Vascular uh, etiologies of facial pain, here the thought process is the, ve the vessel's inflamed, and it could be compressing the adjacent nerve. Uh, in one case for the trigeminal nerve, we think of uh, 80 to 85 percent of the superior cerebellar artery. And this uh, could present uh, unilaterally, usually, or bilateral. Now, now it comes down to the neuropathic causes of facial pain. Uh, we, th we think that there's some damage to the ultrastructure of the nerve, including the myelin sheath, seen in multiple sclerosis, also with any type of facial or dental trauma. We consider uh, a biopsychosocial model in analyzing the patient's stressors in addition to uh, the regional anatomy, therapy and loosening uh, the spastic muscles, and then considering uh, medications and then for the trigeminal uh, carbamazepine potentially. With the EDS patients, uh, we're we, we know that there's collagen issues. There's in the hypermobile patients. There's joint hypermobility, and there's sensitization of the pain signals. So this pain for TMD will be localized to the temporomandibular joint. So here, it, it's a unique joint. Uh, it has uh, the ability uh, to both, it's a hinge and also translate. It actually has four joints that work bilaterally. Uh, the innervation is from uh, V3 of trigeminal. Sensory uh, branch is coming from the auricular temporal nerve. And uh, the TMJ enables us to, to click, chew, and talk. And it's associated in the disorder with ongoing jaw pain that varies in intensity. So we discussed that it's a synovial joint, and you have the articular disc uh, surrounded by uh, three ligaments, the lateral ligament giving uh, sort of a, a construct for minimizing dislocation of the joint, the sphenomandibular ligament, which is flat and thin, and the stylomandibular ligament, which supports the jaw weight. Here's just a the anatomy of the joint in relation to the face. And again, when we think of uh, TMD broadly, uh, the subtype being TMJ, we have to analyze the, the patient uh, from, again, a biopsychosocial uh, model, thinking about what social factors could contribute or exacerbate uh, the patient's presentation, genetic factors, environmental factors, here, from the joint pathology, remember we talked about the muscle component, and then now this is the joint component. So from the joint side, there's these small descriptions um, on the upper right-hand side when you're looking at clenched mouth versus open mouth and the position of the articular disc. And in a normal uh, component there, you'll see where the articular disc is, is located, and then it's described with uh, disc displacement, you know, that's in a reduced position in contrast to disc, disc displacement, you know, without reduction. And just like any other joint in the body, when you have a displaced joint, you have risk for instability, pain, in addition to um, accelerated uh, wear and tear on the articular surface. So we examine uh, their inability to chew, inability to lock the jaw, uh, their limited opening of the mouth, and if there's any concomitant uh, complaints. So for TMD, again, we're, we're looking at stress modification. We're uh, working with our facial therapist on relaxing any of the uh, spastic uh, muscles. 
and then anti-inflammatories. Uh, on the refract, most of these cases respond really well to the conservative pathway. Uh, on the surgical uh, uh, aspect, we, we look at arthroscopic debridement, removal of the effusion and lysis of adhesions. Uh, from the peripheral nerve perspective, uh, in Baltimore, we, we have done uh, denervation of uh, the TMJ in, in somebody that had uh, arthroscopic uh, surgery and still had ongoing neuro severe neuropathic pain. So in this uh, case, we identified the sensory articulating branch, which is a branch from uh, the auricular temporal nerve, and excised that. This concept applies also to patients with severe occipital neuralgia and different parts of the body uh, when it comes to partial sensory joint innervation. Thank you.